Angels. It's a joy to be here. It's my first visit. Well, yeah, actually yesterday I was here as well, but in the new center and it's wonderful to see it full and with so many enthusiastic devotees and classes yesterday and classes today. Um, it's really, really a joy to see this happening here in Mumbai. Today's topic is on attunement and it's a very important topic. Uh, we want to be in attunement with the highest realities, with our higher self, with God, with the divine, with our masters, with our guru. We want to uplift our consciousness to be able to reach them, to be able to hear them, to be able to see them, to be able to hear the Spirit of God, see the light, hear the Om. This is why we want to be in attunement. It's a process of uplifting ourselves out of a lower consciousness, out of desires, out of attachments, out of likes and dislikes. As Swamiji put it, we're a bundle of self-definitions. I am this, I'm American, I'm a woman, I'm black, I am white, I'm Indian, I like curry, I like apple pie, and on and on. <laughs> we go through our whole life, lifetime after lifetime, and the yogi starts to cut the ties, to cut the attachments. We practice Kriya Yoga to get rid of karma, to get rid of desires, to get rid of all the things that we think we are, and to soar in light. That's why I said, good morning, great souls. We're all those great souls underneath. Everything that we've covered over ourselves for who knows how long, and the habit patterns, and the way we think, and I, I must do it this way or that way, and we get locked in this and that. Well, yoga comes to bring you out of that, into the light, and show you this is who you are. There was a man, a disciple, who would always shower uh, flower petals on the image of his guru as he meditated after his meditation. One day he went in so deep in his own practices, await the day. He went so deep. He went into ecstasy and he said, what's in my master is in myself. And he started to toss the petals on his own head. And it wasn't from ego. It was from the recognition that my master has come to show me who I am, that Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Sri Teswaji, Swamiji, everyone has come to show me. It's not enough to put the picture on the altar and adore the guru. You have to say that spark that's in my master, he's lit in me. And it's like a seed that's there. If we water it, if we nourish it, if we care for it, if we make it grow, we become those great souls. Master has a warrior, has an army of warriors, and we all are in that army. And he's given us the tools. He's given us the great tools of liberation and Kriya Yoga and Satsang and places like these and uh, energization and the healing prayers and pranayama and what more does a person need? And people say, I wait for uh, to get better. Well, I. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to wait for? We have so much to be able to find God. And Master said, even if you do one one hundredth of what I've given you, you can arrive there. One one hundredth. And we're doing a lot every day. And we're meditating, doing Kriya twice a day. And I saw the faces of those taking the higher Kriyas yesterday. And some of you will be taking those. And, and I looked at their faces. I looked in their eyes. And I thought, my God. What a change in just a few months. And we say, I don't have the time. Make the time. Change yourself. Change your consciousness. Change your thoughts. Change your habits. Change your patterns through chanting, through meditation. Even in a hard situation. I was in Brindaban a couple of days ago. And it was a difficult situation. And, but I took those young kids who are serving the widow mothers. We have a, a work there, as you know. And I took those youngsters, and they were looking at me like, 
can you help us? And I just said, I can't help you, but they can help you. Let's chant. And we chanted our hearts out. Those kids were raising the roof off, chanting, <laughs> Jai Guru, Jai Guru, Jai. One guy was on the drum, he was about to burst it. <laughs> and the cymbals and Jai, and I just kept Jai Guru. Because I knew this is what they need. This is what we need. Our Guru said, stay in tune to all I've given you. You're having a hard time, chant. You're having a hard time, come to yoga classes. You're having a hard time, pick up one of the 150 books Swamiji wrote. Pick up one of Master's books. You're having a hard time, do an affirmation. You're having a hard time, call a Guru Bhai. And I love this thought. If you call a Guru Bhai, a true Guru Bhai, they're ever with you. You say, oh, I'm having a hard time. Come on, let's go to the center. Come on, I found something Master said. I'll send it to you on WhatsApp. Come on, I've got, let's go for a walk. Come on. You call a regular, everyday, so-called friend. You say, I'm having a hard time. They say, me too. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. I'm telling you. You say, how are you going to help me? <laughs> you know, it's like, you can't swim. They can't swim. They're getting you. They're both drowning. And so you, we have the protection. This place is a protection. It's a heaven. It's a haven. It's a lighthouse. Look out there. All you have to do is look down the streets at people's eyes, people's posture, the desires that they have. And you come through this beautiful door with the joy is within you. It's so beautiful. I don't think any Ananda Center has joy is within you. You open the door, I walk in. Joy is within me. Joy is within you. And this is what Master came to bring. And he said, it, some of you may fall. We've all seen the film, the answer. Remember, some of you may fall, but it doesn't have to be if you will stay in tune. And he gave the way to stay in tune. And I remember I first, when I first came to Ananda, I came and I w was there all enthusiastic. You know, in the beginning, everybody's enthusiastic. My enthusiasm soars, you know. <laughs> You give them a few years, my enthusiasm soars <laughs> to embrace infinity, you know. <laughs> I mean, what happened to you? <laughs> what happened to you? And they looked like... <laughs> so, I was like that. So, I was at Ananda, and I was put in the kitchen as my seva, and I washed the dishes. I washed piles and piles and at the retreat. That was my seva. And one of the Brigu readers, he said, that your guru put you there so you can reduce your ego. I was 21, I know everything, and knows, you know, <laughs> he's gonna tell me what to do. And <laughs> I was on the dishes duty for months. One day I said, I'm done with the dishes. <laughs> I left and went back home, and I was gone for three years. My God, you think it's, you're in? I went away and I was just snatched by delusion for three years. Satan has its own power. Master said delusion has its own power. I thought I'd go back to my old life. You know, you put the old coat on and it's hot. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. And when I got to my house, I remember it was at my mom's and I have my, then I lived on my own. I have this picture of Guruji and within a week it fell off the wall and cracked. And I thought, oh my God, this isn't a good sign. That happens to you. I have my Kriya Mal, I was a Kriya Ban. I remember it broke, all the beads fell. I said, whoa, this isn't a good sign. I had one bad sign after another, but I just stayed. But you know one thing I did, I never stopped my Kriya. I might have stopped everything else. I, don't, I didn't ever like, I didn't like energization. I might have stopped that. <laughs> I don't want to energize. I don't want to be positive, energetic, enthusiastic. I don't want to, you know, it was like total rebellion. But then I, I kept those Kriyas going and I, I didn't do much, maybe 12, but I kept them going over those three years and one day, as if I heard Master's voice saying, go back to Ananda. 
and I thought, I don't want to be at Ananda. <laughs> you know, it's just so complete delusions. You don't have to live there, just go back. And I went back finally for a retreat. And I thought no one would remember me. I was this little girl who came and I was uh, quiet. And I said, you, you were here three years ago. I said, you know, <laughs> you are the girl from Los Angeles. <laughs> and nobody let me go away. This is a guru bai. You come, you just hear that little whisper. Someone told me something so beautiful yesterday. <clears throat> she said, she hadn't been coming to the cent we didn't have a center, but she hadn't been coming to the satsangs of Mumbai for some time. She had come, then she stopped coming. And then she said one day she had a dream. And in the dream, it was Babaji. And he was calling her on the phone. And he says, hey, why haven't you been to the satsangs and the classes? And she said it was a very vivid, and she, she didn't put the phone down, but in the dream, you know, she put the phone down, and she said, Dhyanaji, I've never missed since. Do you see? If you keep trying, God calls you, and he brings you, and he protects you, and he helps you. But you have to put out the energy yourself. You have to want to try. And finally, I remember this beautiful story of, um, one of Master's disciples, Rajasi Janakananda, was a very great disciple, Master's foremost. And he said he went through such a dark time. It happens. You go through dark times. He had been seeing the light all this time, and he said that suddenly he, all he could see was darkness. He didn't feel his Master's presence, and he just kept trying. That's the point. Master said, if you keep trying, God will never let you down. He kept trying his meditation. He kept trying, kept trying. Then one day he saw a speck of light. And he said, I'm going to hang on to that. You know, you might feel just a tiny bit of Master's presence, or you might, a little bit of the Om sound, or just a, a little joy in your heart. Master said, take that little bubble of joy and blow on it. Expand it. Make it bigger. He saw this little speck, and then he kept meditating, and then that speck got bigger. He kept meditating, then it was big, he kept meditating, and then out of the light came each one of the gurus. Swami Sri Tesraji came first. All is fine now. Lady Mahashaya, Babaji, each one of the gurus, he merged with their consciousness because he kept trying to stay in tune. And this is why we have in our ceremonies, we have the discipleship vow. Remember, we have the Kriya vow. We had the fire ceremony. We chant Om Swaha, I offer myself. In Kriya, we come up and we say, I will, I do, I will. Because we want to keep going strongly on the path. And the discipleship vow, we say, I will do it. I am yours, I am thine, be thou mine. The purification ceremony, you no, know, we say, I seek purification by your grace. We're ever trying. And otherwise, our way gets hazy, it gets foggy. And I remember one time I was, I was uh, having a really difficult time and I had a picture of Guruji and I kept praying to him, what's so, why are things so bad? And I inwardly could hear him saying, what station are you tuned to? Isn't it the truth? What station are you tuned to? We say yes, we do affirmations, we say I will, I do, I seek purification, we say all these things. You have to live it. It's not enough to say it. You have to live it. And I could hear Master's voice saying, what are you tuned to? And so here, through his teachings, he te shows us how to tune in to his consciousness. And through that consciousness, we feel bliss. Through that consciousness, we see the light. Through that consciousness, we begin to enter into the light at the spiritual eye. Through that consciousness, we hear the Om. Through his consciousness, we feel the consciousness of our Guru uplifting us. 
through his conscious, our consciousness, we experience God because the guru, we're open and the guru has come in. Some people didn't feel him. Remember that Devisha read that one lady said, I don't feel you as much as the others, Master. And he says, if you shut the door, how can I come in? And there was a man who was with Master for 12 years. And he left. And uh, people said, well, Master, will he come back? Is he coming? When will he come back? Master said, never. They were, really? He'll never come back? He said, he was never in. Oh, my God. He's coming, you know, root. Coming, going, coming, going. His heart was never open. And so for all of us to be in tune, we have to be open, we have to be dynamic, we have to be moving forward. I remember we went to Italy to serve, to set up the ashrams there, and Swamiji left some of us there. And I asked him, I said, Swamiji, what are we doing here? I was 28, I was new at Ananda, there was only four of us there. I said, what, what do you want us to do? He was leaving on the next flight. and. Uh, his words have been like a mantra for me my whole spiritual life. He said, Dhyana, tune in to God and Guru, and you will know what to do. And I asked myself, am I in tune? It's a big question. You ask yourself every day, am I in tune? And I realized, was I energizing? No. Was I chanting? No. Was I studying Swamiji's books? No. Masters? No. Was I doing affirmations? No. Was I doing the healing prayers? No. I had to learn to get myself in tune. And when you get in tune, and there's always these sort of ripples, you have to get back. Right attitudes, right behavior, listening to the right kind of music, being with your guru by the right kind of people, reading the right kind of books, aligning your life to God. Otherwise, you're pushing from both sides of the door. So if we learn, we do our practices with devotion, with love, we take Guruji's hand, we try to stay in tune, he will bring us over the ocean of so many pitfalls and delusions. Master would weep when people fell into those delusions and would go. It doesn't have to be, as he said, some of you will fall, but it doesn't have to be if you will stay in tune. Let's all make a vow to ourselves today. I will do my best to stay in tune. God bless you all.